Welcome to Electron Line. Having the ability to use Taylor Sears or McLaurin Sears can come in really handy to approximate values that are always fairly difficult to calculate. Let's take a look at the special theory of relativity. We know that if a spaceship or a satellite travels past the Earth or around the Earth at a fairly large velocity, that may be a fraction of the speed of light, the time measured on the spacecraft will be different than the time measured on the Earth. The difference can be expressed in this equation right here, where the time measured on the spacecraft will be equal to the time measured of the Earth times the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared, where c is the speed of light. And so we can express it in this particular fashion. It turns out that with satellites, like with GPS satellites, we do have to adjust for that time difference. There's actually an adjustment that we need to do in the software to allocate a difference in the time between the time measured by the satellites and time measured on the ground. So if we use the expansion here, what we call the binomial expansion of the 1 minus v squared over c squared to the 1 half power, using the format that we have here, the, square, the 1 plus x quantity to the k power, if we use the same format, the expansion will look like this. And if we then evaluate the constants, we can say that the time as measured on the spacecraft is equal to the time as measured on the Earth times the quantity 1 minus 1 half v over c quantity squared minus 1 eighth v over c quantity to the fourth power minus 1 16th v over c quantity to the sixth power minus 5 over 128 v over c raised to the 8th power, and so forth, and we can of course calculate as many terms as we want. But it turns out for, for relatively small values of v, let's say if v is only 1% the speed of light, or if v is 10% the speed of light, we do not need that many terms to come up with a pretty good estimate of that value. Matter of fact, satellites travel way slower than 1% the speed of light, so it definitely works for them as well. So if we're going to do a first order or second order approximation when v is 1% the speed of light, notice instead of v we write 0.01c. When we evaluate this just to the first order, meaning we only need the first term past the constant term, we can see that the time as measured by the satellite is 0.9995 times the time measured on the Earth. If we go one additional order, we do one additional term, notice the difference is extremely slight. Instead of having 0.999, and it looks like I'm missing a number of nines. This should be one more nine like that. So this would be, let me check to yes, make sure. I'm missing a nine. So it's four nines and a five. So 0.99995t for the first order approximation, for the second order approximation, notice instead of having a 5 here, it becomes a 49998 times t. So for most purposes, we don't even need to go to a second order approximation. A first order can do just fine. Now, if it's 10% the speed of light, notice then we may want to go to a second order. The first order will give us the equation t sub naught equals t times 0.995. And if we go in additional order, then it becomes 0.994875. So you can see there's a, a significant difference compared to only using the first order when the speed goes up to 10% of the speed of light. But now we're talking about scientific calculations in space, not at all relative, uh, what we would call practical applications of this kind of technology when we're dealing with satellites. As I said, the velocities are typically much slower than 1% of the speed of light, so we usually don't even have to go past the first order approximation in our calculations, and that's how it's done.